Today I'm going to review Torso from 1973 and if you like more horror films and TV shows reviewed subscribe to my channel because there's more to come. Torso 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 came out in 1973 and it was directed by Segorio Martino. He also wrote the story and he's directed lots of Giallo films. The film's also known as Carnal Violence. The film stars Susie Kendall as Jean, Tina Ramont as Daniela, Luke Miranda as Roberto and John Richardson as Franz. It was made and filmed in Italy and runs 1 hour and 35 minutes. During production, none of the cast were told who the killer was, and because of the high amount of red herons in the film, many of the actresses were convinced it was someone else doing the murders. The film was highly censored in English language countries. Because of this, parts of the English dubbing do not exist for the film. On uncut DVDs, these scenes appeared on the original Italian language track and English subtitles. There was an alternative ending shot with a killer surviving at the end of the film. And I won't give any spoilers away for who's the, the murderer, whether it's a man or a woman, because with these Jello films, most of the films are working out how the actual murderer is. And there's lots of red herons in this film. So Torso was a Jello, and it's a lot like the Dario Argento ones, especially the Animal Trilogy that Argento did. I've reviewed all three of them films on my channel. And this film is very similar to the style of those three films. You would actually think it was a Dario Argento movie at times. You get all the traditional trademarks of the Jello films. There's black gloves, there's close-ups, there's strange music, murder, gore, sex, everything. I was actually surprised by the amount of softcore nudity and sex in this film. There's quite a lot of it. Bones enjoyed it. Oh, Phil! It's like a bloody porno! No wonder the call is fucking Bones! <laughs> <laughs> Susie Kendall's brilliant in this film. It's really her movie. She does a standout performance. And she's been in a lot of good, um, films and TV shows. She had a small part in Thunderball. She's been in Dario Argento's The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. She's in another Jello film called Spasmo. She's even in Tales at Witness Madness. One of the, the best segments in that film. The one with the penny farthing. And she's been in TV shows like The Persuaders. So she's been in loads of good stuff. And she's a British actress. But the dubbed her in this film with an American actress. Why do so many bloody women get dubbed in these films? I thought bloody Tarkin would be the strong point. <laughs> <laughs> and Sergio Martino, the director, he's done lots of Jello films as well. But this one's his most famous and probably his best. And he used a great technique in this film. He didn't tell the cast who the actual murderer was, whether it was a male or a female or who it was. So none, none of the cast knew. And it kind of shows on the expressions of the faces. So it was a great directional idea, that. And there's quite a lot of gore effects in this film. It is it is quite strong at times. <laughs> Nine people die in the film, and there's a weird explanation why the murderers doing what they're doing. It's to do with dolls. The person got affected years ago by them. There's great location work. When horror films are done in like foreign countries like Italy, that they seem to be a bit more scary somehow than for some reason it seems to be a bit more dangerous. Hey, Phil, how come they're all bloody murderers in Italy? Yes, there is a lot of murderers in Italy. But it's the last 30 minutes of this film that really stand out. Susie Kendall's character, Jane, she falls down some stairs and hurts her ankle. Oh, 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 oh. 
they give her like um, drugs and that so she falls asleep because she's in pain. People who are inside where she's staying get murdered and the murderer doesn't know that she's in the house. She's like hiding and, and she's like looking out cracks keeping away from the murderer and the murderer's sewn limbs off. And she's watching the person do it. That's really uh, effective. And there's good use of sound in this film, or lack of sound. Like there's moments where the director's brave enough to have total silence and it creates great tension. A lot of modern films have to have real loud music all the time, non-stop. But sometimes just having real silence, like create tons of atmosphere. Something Hitchcock did and also Dario Argento. And it's also interesting that there was an alternative ending where you think the murderer is actually still alive at the end of the film. But the version I watched, the murderer wasn't. So overall, I thought this film was excellent. I, I love Giallo films. And it's very similar to Argento's work. Although it, Argento is a better director, this is kind of like the next best thing. So out of 10, I think I'd give this one here. Yeah, out of 10. Do you think boys do like it? Look the bloody boobs in this film. Top marks. Okay, everybody, like, subscribe, and share. Bye. Bye.